Yo, what's up guys, this is Mike from Junk 90s. We got a grading submission PSA mail day today. This is part of that 90s special that PSA did last month and got the grades back. So we're about ready to go and do a review on that. So a couple really good cards in here that I'm pumped for. This first one that I'm gonna do last, hiding the grade on this one. This is a Shohei Otani 2018 Bowman Chrome rookie card. Uh, this is not mine. This is my brother's actually. I was hoping, uh, we were hoping for a nine or a 10. He was belly aching a little bit. They might get a three back on this one. I was like, dude, come on, get out of here. This thing's perfect. So, um, this one wouldn't do last, but, uh, if it's a nine, even after that injury that he had at UCL tag, uh, this is like still a three or $400 card. And at 10, it gets up to like eight or 900. Uh, it was actually hitting like 1200 right before that, uh, that injury he had, but still an awesome card, still show him, man, still an awesome rookie. So we're going to do that one last, uh, Brian, Brian was belly, Brian was belly a little bit about this and he's like, oh my God, I'm going to send in, get a three. If I get a six, it was a little fun toying with him about the grade before I got to show it to him. But that one, that one will reveal very, at the very end, but we'll put it here, put some other good stuff in here too. Uh, you know, we'll kick it off with the Griffey that I got. Um, this one's a really cool one. This uh, I sent in actually as a resub. I got an eight on this one. And I could not for the life of me figure out why this thing was an eight. Uh, 10 was the centering unless they did something really weird uh, with you know how the top to bottom goes. I compared this on uh, some of the stuff that PSA had or 10s on their website and the centering all looked fine. Um, I thought there might've been like a little bit of surface scratches that maybe could keep it from being a 10. But I remember when I sent this in, I was like an eight, that's crazy. So I resubbed this, um, got a nine on it, very happy about that. Um, I was thinking eight or nine on it, so uh, happy with that number. And the the eight is only like 20 bucks, but the nine uh, the nine goes like, is going like about 85 right now on bins. So, I mean, it's not the hugest jump in profit, but still, still a pretty good, uh, nice return on it. The 10, if I had hit that, I wasn't expecting it because I figured if there was an eight, there must be something off with it, even though it seemed undergraded. Uh, the, the 10 you see go for four or $500 at auction sometimes. So that would be a really, really nice hit if that came back at 10, but I'm still very happy with a nine, especially cause I feel a little bit vindicated now that I know what I'm doing. Hell yeah. Get out of your graders. I know what's up. So that seemed like an undergrade and an eight, uh, very happy with the nine. So we can make a profit on it. So that one felt pretty good put those in right there uh next up these are also for my brother three different ja morants uh we all know what ja had going on in the past you know year or so with these gun issues but you know man he's still one of the most exciting players in the nba even though hopefully he can get over these uh you know we'll say disciplinary slash legal issues he's having but if he does uh these i think you turn out to be great investments because they're you know they're Kind of underpriced right now, accurately priced. We'll say, uh, you know, plenty of opportunity for him to rebound because he's an incredible player and maybe just as important as that. He's a very exciting one. So I was thinking nines or tens on all of these. He might have been belly aching my brother a little bit again, uh, but we'll see what he gets on these three. The nines go for, you know, right now, like 10, 15 bucks, really not that important. Uh, the tens only like 20 to 35, 40 bucks. So not really a big card by any means, but still uh, a nice one to, if you want to like stash these things away, see how they do. So this first one got a 10, hooray for big bro. Second out of three, got a 10. And the third one out of three got a nine. So I'd say it's pretty successful if you're sending any era of card in and you're getting a nine and two tens. I think you'd be pretty happy with that. So uh, good on him. This next one, I'm gonna hide the grade while I talk about it. This is a 1996 Upper Deck MJ on three pointers, number VP7. Uh, I bought this one off a dealer to show. It's like a $5 raw card. So I thought I'd take a shot at it, especially with the special going on. These things are only like $15 to submit. So I'm actually submitting, you'll see later in here, some cards that I wouldn't normally submit. Uh, but one, I kind of wanted the action and two, I was like 15 bucks, man, let's go for it. Let's have some fun. So this one, um, there's an ask for it of, uh, 199 if it hits a nine. Um, I was thinking this would be a nine. There's like a tiny little bit of corner chipping on this, but it's still at the end of the day, gorgeous card with a shot at a 10. I thought, uh, very unhappy with how this came, came out though. This one got an eight. Um, I thought this is very undergraded. I have cards, unless I miss something on the surface, which you can have happen sometimes, um, I thought this was really undergraded and nine, I thought would have been a fine, pretty fair grade. Um, corners and edges definitely, uh, to me looked nine, very like looked pretty confident nines on those, uh, with a shot at a 10, eight would be very surprising on those two. Um, I'm going to recheck 
you know, I don't even know how they'd measure centering on this. The upper deck logo is very well placed. Um, an eight for surface, oh, man, I don't even know what they'd be looking at for this one, but this one looked very much like a nine or possible 10 on this one. So I was very unhappy with this. Um, you know, the, the eight has the only recent comp, it's like a $20 card. So I guess I will be fine, but this is definitely a disappointing one that I'm actually thinking maybe I'll do a regrade on at some point. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll, excuse me, uh, <laughs> I guess we'll see, got distracted for a second. I guess we'll see what we do with this one in the future. Cause this just, uh, is too nice of a card. This is another one. I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit more, but you know, some of the things you kind of see as you go along in, in grading, you start to wonder, um, you know, are these things graded by one guy, uh, with the explosion, not even growth, but, you know, explosion in grading, uh, in the last few years, you begin to wonder if everybody in, you know, on PSA's roster has the same grading acumen. And if they're, you know, this used to grading the same cards, uh, I thought the modern ones, the ultra modern ones from, you know, 2019, 2020 or 2018, Susan, the Shohei really shows the Morantz, uh, I won't give it a show hey yet, but you know, I thought what we got on that one was a fair grade and same with the John Morantz, but the I thought that the um the nineties cards were fairly undergraded. So I'm wondering in the future maybe something to think about in terms of separating those out. I just wonder if they handed these off to a guy who was, you know, well versed in ultra modern but wasn't really well versed in nineties paper cards. So um just something to think about. Um and I'll talk about that a little bit more, but just maybe maybe a lesson on this, a low stakes lesson, because these aren't really big money cards anyway. Um, but just something to think about as you get more used to grading, you know, what could possibly, uh, you know, being be going on at PSA. We've all seen plenty of instances where things are, you know, in our opinion, over and under graded. And, you know, I'm not a professional grader, but I'm certainly pretty, pretty good at this, um, I'll say. But anyway, uh, it just makes you wonder uh, kind of like in the sense of not that they don't know what they're doing. Because if they're hired by PSA, they are absolutely qualified. They're more qualified than me. But maybe in the sense of everybody is a uh, human that does this, there are subjectivities to this, of course. And I almost compare it to, you know, what I've noticed even in myself when I'm going over my own cards, which is sometimes, you know, when uh, the comparison, the analogy I'll make is uh, if you're in the on-deck circle and you're going to be, uh, you know, getting up to bat next, you throw the donut in your bat. Because then when you get up the plate, you just swung a few times with the donut and that thing feels light as fuck, you know, like light AF. And uh, you, you know, you, you think you can swing at a thousand miles per hour when you do that. And I just wonder sometimes if you've just seen a number of like really, really pristine looking cards. And then you see something with a couple more defects. If the things that you thought were nines and tens over here, you just start to mark down a little bit more. Um, I've noticed that in myself where if I've been looking at nines and tens too long, um, I start to see every single little flaw and I start to see things that probably would be nines as eights. Uh, and then sometimes if I'm looking at things that have larger defects, uh, like sixes, uh, five, sixes, maybe even sevens, but really fives and sixes, um, with more vintage stuff, we'll say five, sixes and sevens. And then all of a sudden I'm starting to see, uh, you know, eights and nines and tens, uh, from that, from other eras, you start to, um, you know, it, it can just change your perspective a little bit on what's going on. So I, I wondered if that was possibly the case. But anyway, um, we'll move on to the next one. But this one I was pretty unhappy with. A 9 I thought would have been been a fine grade. 10 I would have loved to see. Uh, I don't even know what it would have gone for. But 8 was certainly, a, I thought, undergraded. But maybe this will be one that I send in the future. Crack and reset, you never know. Uh, but got an 8 on this one. A little bit disappointing, but whatever. Uh, man, I love my MJ cards too, What you can do. This next one is a Sean Kemp blocking a grade off. So this is a 1994 collector's choice gold signature. Uh, these cards are really cool. I want to say these were like one per box, uh, back in the day. So this is definitely, if you hit a gold, uh, you got a nice hit. So there are, uh, none listed in any grade. A raw, this card is like two bucks. Um, someone sold a 10 recently. I think they listed it at like three ninety nine. but they sold it at like one eighty. So I felt like, um, you know, sending this one in again, this is not what I would normally send in $15 price point, want a little bit of action. Uh, you know, I was like, let's, let's go with this Sean Kemp. Um, I was really thinking an eight or a nine on this one. Um, and I thought that would have been fine. I, I was hoping for a nine, eight, I thought would have been, you know, a fair grade. There's like a little bit of a, 
you know, corner thing going on in the back where it's like a non-breaking, slightly non-planar corner, but I've seen plenty of eights with that. Um, so maybe nine would have been a generous grade, but this one, this one got a seven. This is another one where, uh, you know, I, I think it's a little bit undergraded, but, um, you know, this, this happens and kind of goes with the trend of the, you know, the more modern ones got more of the grades I thought and the stuff that I, you know, I love and were my submissions, not my brother's stuff, uh, for the nineties did not do as well. So it just makes you wonder, uh, you know, if they had that bat donut on the bat thing going on, but, um, you know, hey, what are you going to do? Um, I, I'm going to guess that I can get 15 or 20. I'll just make my money back on this one. This is also one where... This this is not one I'd resub because I don't think it's got that much of a shot at a nine. So I've not been writing these down. So this one got an eight. Um, this one got a seven. <clears throat> um, and uh, I don't think I'd resubmit this one because I don't really think it's got a good shot at a nine. And even if I does... if Excuse me. Even if it did hit, it would sit around for a very long time given that the 10 went for... 180 uh you know decent upside but also limited upside on it for a card that would probably sit for a long time already got a seven so just not a lot of upside in resubmitting this so i think i'm just gonna put it on there let some sean kemp fan come help me break even on this thing and uh you know go from there so no big deal uh would have loved to see this in a little better grade if this thing hit an item i might even kept it for myself I love, I love these gold signature collector's choice cards from the 90s, man. These were the cards, like I've said before, that when you were in the car, uh, your mom and dad would give you these to shut you up, uh, <laughs> like to reward you so that you would shut up and stay quiet on the long trip down to, you know, Maryland to see your cousins like we would for a little bit. So, um, I, uh, man, I love these things. These things are just like such throwbacks for me. I love the gold signature ones, but, um, you know, I if it was a nine, I might have even kept it, but... Uh, seven, a little disappointing, but what you gonna do? It happens. Um, next, Mike Mussina, Mirror Gold. These are really cool cards, man. Got this as part of a collection. Again, another one I would not have sent in. Just Mike Mussina, even though he is, you know, a Hall of Famer, he is not uh, particularly in high demand. Not all Hall of Famers are uh, created equal. So this one I was thinking a nine or a 10 on. I think you can see that right there. Nine or a 10 uh, was my guess on this one. Uh, I don't know if there is, I don't, this might be on the set registry of PSA, but if it is, I think it's only got like a couple people filling out. And even then these baseball sets get so big that, you know, people usually don't finish them. They just get like 10% in. They're like, oh my God, that's right. There's 700 of these. So I don't know how big the, the select set is, but these mirror gold cards are just so cool. The, the Jeter in this is a big money card, a big money card. Um, the Mike Mussina has no comps on it. Um, I believe the lowest ask for a nine is like 50. The lowest ask for a 10 is around 200. So I was like, hey, 15 bucks, not one I normally send in. Have a little fun with this one. Um, if I hit the nine, maybe I'd ask like 40. If I hit the 10, maybe I'd ask like 150. Uh, this one got a nine. Pretty happy with it. Um, I mean, I would have, I thought this had a really good shot at a 10. Thought it was a pretty strong 10 contender. But kind of going along with the whole, like, everything that I got from the 90s was either, you know, lower of what I thought it would be or a grade beneath. So, uh, but this was, you know, you if you get a 9, you can't really argue with it. Because these guys, you know, again, they look at things under magnification. So, uh, if you if you miss on it, what are you going to do? Uh, but pretty clean card. Nice card. Um, 9, can't really be that disappointed with it. So, I'll probably list it at, like, 40 or 45 take offers and just take a small profit and try to move it quick. So nine on the uh, Mike Messina, would have loved a 10. Uh, 10 in that would have been gorgeous, but nine, can't complain too much. Uh, next one, Mickey Mantle. Uh, these 1996 uh, finest reprints are so cool. I don't usually like reprints, but I love these ones. Uh, I think these Mantle ones are so cool. Um, I, so I'll just say it again, man. I, I usually hate reprint cards. I think they're... Uh, they just lack creativity and they're it's it's just like come on it's like can you guys put a little bit of effort into it but i, I love the chrome uh reprints of the 50s and 60s cards they just didn't have chrome back in the day and they just look so nice uh like this so i'm i'm totally fine with these manual reprints i think they're really really cool actually so uh let me look at my notes the 65 um for so the let me see uh, i guess there's like no uh, sorry, this one, that's right. I had another one that was 56 is coming up, but the uh, 65 is actually, I think only one listed on eBay. Someone's asking 300 for an eight. That's crazy high. There's no way he's going to get that. Uh, I don't even know if you would get that in refra for a refractor. 
Um, I was guessing eight. I was guessing a nine on this. I was like, could be eight or nine or a ten. I'm not that well versed in Chrome cards to start picking out. Well, it's got like a little bit of you know pitting on it. Like, is it are those significant enough to have it not be a nine anymore? I don't really know. Um, comp. There's no comps in the ten. Uh, comp on a nine. It auctioned at thirty eight. Comp on an eight. It auctioned at eighteen. I thought this would be probably a nine, but it could be anywhere from eight to a ten. This got an eight. Uh, again, another one like on the lower end. Uh, I won't, you know, get too mad about this one because I'm not, I just don't submit as many Chrome cards because I don't play as much in the, uh, in the ultra modern era as a lot of other people do. So I'm like, all right, maybe, um, take this one as a little more of a lesson and, uh, learn a little bit more about Chrome, but, uh, still I'll probably get my money back this, uh, or probably break even on this one. It's a $15 submission. If I get 20 bucks on it, 25 bucks, maybe since there's nothing out there, can ask a little bit more and try to take offers and make a couple bucks, but uh, nine certainly would have been awesome. Ten would have been great, but uh, what are you gonna do? Got an eight on this, not want to normally submit. Just kind of on this one, kind of I'm gonna kind of just you know put it out there, try to sell quick, keep my money moving. So that's that one. This last one, very cool card. Uh, I gotta block the grade on this one too. It's out of view. Okay, good. Uh, 1999 Collector's Edge Fury Fast and Furious Barry Sanders. This is numbered out of uh, 500, so that's a pretty low print run for something from the 90s. A uh, very cool card, very rare, maybe not like rare as 500 of them, but for the era rare and very low pop count on PSA, uh, none available, a nine sold on best offer for 50 bucks. It might've been listed at like around a hundred. So um, this one I was thinking eight or a nine. It had like a little more surface issues going on than some of the other cards. And I have almost no experience with acetate cards like this this is a see-through card that you can still see my hand through so this is an ass you can probably see it even without my hand through this is an ass day card uh i have very little experience so this is also just like an, uh, a chance for me to submit an ass day card and see how it did so uh i figured this would be you know an eight or a nine seemed like it had a little bit of surface stuff going on but again ass day cards barely any experience for me i never see these nor do i usually submit them uh, this one got a nine. So hey, got one in the higher range of what I thought it would be. It's a uh, it's a nice win on that one. So I'm probably gonna list this at like 75 ish and take offers. Uh, Barry Sanders actually uh, has a lot of collectors, man. He's one of the best running backs of all time. People love him, loved him in the 90s. So uh, a cool car to his. Nice insert, uh, low population. So I can probably this is this is a very good example of one that you can submit um, on a nice discount and then. Uh, kind of ask what you want because there's really, you know, no other competition and no one else to say what this thing is worth or isn't worth. And if you get a guy who's a huge Barry Sanders fan, needs to have it now, you can do pretty well. So I think a nice target, I think 50s sounds good. I'd love to get 75 to 100 for this. So we'll see what I ultimately price it at. But this one, this one was like a nice uh, kind of pull for a $15 submission. So I was pretty happy with that one. Um, Time for show head. Here we go. So, like I said, um, this is like the big one from the submission. Uh, this is my brother's card. The nine is like a three or four hundred dollar card. The ten is like eight to nine hundred. We'll say eight to like a thousand right now. Hopefully, he picks it up a little bit despite this injury uh, and stays in the MVP hunt. <clears throat> um, it was going for like twelve hundred uh, right before that UCL tear happened. So. Uh, I was telling my brother, I was like, yo, man, I think this is a 9 or 10. He was kind of like, oh, it could be anything, I don't know. But this one got a 10. Uh, huge grade for him, man. That This one was submitted at a $15 level. And that's uh, one of the times where PSA is like, hey, uh, we can't just like let you take this at 15. So this is a really nice get uh, for my brother. Very excited for him getting that 10 out of this one. So unfortunately, it dipped a little bit because that UCL tear. So let me mark these off. Um, I don't know, that's not the right one. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, these dipped a little bit because of that UCL tear, but this is still a huge get. I mean, when you're talking about something that's like an eight, nine hundred dollar card or even thousand dollar card still, um, you're going to be real happy about that one. So I guess even if it wasn't my card, very happy that the highest value one in here got the best possible grade. So a uh, very cool pull for him. Um, I just sold a Mookie Betts first Bowman auto for him. Uh, that a guy offered 1350 on right at the beginning of that hot streak. I don't even know what it's going on right now, but I was kind of like, yo, man, do you want to, you know, negotiate with this guy a little bit? You want to maybe like try to get him close to our bin number? And he was like, nah, just take it. Uh, I think he doubled his money on that one, so it felt really good. I want to say he bought this 
for like five bucks after he tours after Shohei tours UCL the first time. Uh, he bought a different one for twenty. It was one of those who did this one and that one. I think it was this one he bought for five bucks. So when I told him it was a ten, he was like, "Oh my god!" Like OMG, cannot believe <laughs> what he, how big he turned that one around on. So yeah, man, whether or not that's. 800, 1,000, 1,200, 2,000, whatever. If you started at five bucks and you 200X your investment, uh, you did pretty good. So I'm super excited for him on this one. Um, we'll see what he wants. He, he definitely wants to sell it. Uh, I don't know how set up he is on eBay. He he sells some Pokemon on there, but um, <clears throat> sports, I guess he doesn't do as much of. So anyway, super pumped for him. Maybe I'll sell it for him. Maybe I'll, Maybe it won't. Depends what he wants to do. Maybe he wants to buy and hold it for, or, uh, you know, grade and hold for a little while and invest a little more because that is part of the fun, part of the game. But this is certainly a huge hit. So super excited for him. Uh, my part of the submission was not the best. He did really well. Three tens and a nine. Had a boy, Bri. Uh, and then just wrapping it up, two others that came back uh, without, um, <clears throat> with notations on them. This one was too bad. There's another uh, acetate card I sent in. It was a Merino 1999 uh, Collector's Edge Supreme uh, from a similar collection I got. Just another one I was experimenting with where, uh, you know, special in the 90s cards. I think this one's out of what, like a thousand? Yeah, it's out of a thousand. So I was like, yo, it could be an eight, could be a nine, could be a 10. Not many listed. Let's see how Merino does. Uh, but this one came back uh, miscut. I don't even know how you'd tell a miscut on these, but maybe it was just small i don't even know maybe a, there's a weird angle on it I've, I have no idea but this one came back and miscut and that happens sometimes uh this one was too bad i really wanted i mean maybe they saved it for myself this could have been who knows this could have been another another eight but this is the 56 mantle i just i love these finest ones but this one had a minimum size requirement so apparently it was small for the um for the release so this would have been really cool to uh get this one graded and hit a nine or a ten but it might have been an eight the other one was an eight i thought the other was a pretty strong nine or 10 candidate, but so who really knows, but this one was a nice one too. So, um, anyway, that's the submission. I hope you all had fun. Um, keep you posted as we get more of these in and, uh, yeah, like subscribe, comment, whatever you want to do. Um, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace all.